They did that in a lot of places. They came in and they wanted to put Christianity. They wiped out, but they didn't just wipe out the religion. They wiped out all the culture, all the, the dress, the beliefs. What I don't understand is if this is a majority nation that's Muslim, yeah. how come around Bukit Bintang there's so many prostitutes? I went to Peru and Colombia mm. and there's a separation between, they say, you are from the Spanish, the colonizer. Yeah. Those who are a bit fair, they say, no, no. We are the original people, people. of Peru and Colombia. Yeah, yeah. You are not. You are from the descendants of the colonizer. Because you know that the Spanish came in and they destroyed all the culture of Costa Rica. They did, wiped it all out. But they did that in lots of countries. They did that in Nicaragua. They did that in a lot of places. They came in and they wanted to put Christianity. They wiped out, but they didn't just wipe out the religion. They wiped out all the culture, all the, the dress, the beliefs, even the everything like Costa Rica is, Costa Rica is like drinking milk, has no flavor, like drinking water. Yeah. It used to have lots of color and lots of flavor, it has nothing because the Christians did that. And they did that everywhere they went, the British, the Spanish. Yeah. Even the French did that. Oh yeah, the, the French, if not, there won't be around 10% of Muslim population in, uh, in France. Oh yeah, it's true. And they have a lot of Algerian there. Oh, yeah. And now they are saying, oh, you guys are immigrants. Yes, wait, 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 wait. Before you talk about their immigrants, what have you done to their country? That they, they have just, to migrate here. That's the problem. That's the same with Britain, though. Not an expression, but an explanation that says, you came into Africa and you destroyed all these countries, and now they're coming to you because you destroyed them. If you left them, they probably wouldn't be trying to get out of there. It's the same as India. When the British came to India, India was the most... Um, the most the wealthiest one of the wealthiest if not the wealthiest country in the world yeah. now it and then it became poor because the british took everything that was good in from them yeah if not they then, stole uh, the, the king will not have uh the when world where they have gold inside where they got the gold they don't have gold resources in uk Correct. they don't have that where do you get that from and the crowns the diamonds everything they took everything they took everything yeah. <laughs> these are quite common during that, that time where it's either i colonize you or you, you colonize me so they have to fight for each other. They have to expand their land, which is, we understand, which is less than 100 years ago, and the world is still doing it, right? Even, even up until today. What is the percentage of Muslims in Malaysia? 80%, 85%? According to the national census, it's around 65, 60. Very low. Yeah, 65, 60. But your government is Muslim. Our government is Muslim. Uh, most of the uh, members of parliament are Muslim. But of course, you have a non-Muslim over there as well. If I come to your country, and your country rule is, you can't drink alcohol, and you have to wear long pants, then I don't drink alcohol, I wear long pants, or I don't come. I don't have a problem with that. What I don't understand is, if this is a majority nation that's Muslim, yeah. how come around Bukit Bintang there's so many prostitutes? How come there's places that's so low? Uh, you see, because we are not governed by the full Sharia law. A lot of people thought that when we talk about Sharia, it's merely about chopping off head, head. No, 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 no. That is a law in terms of legislation. But when it comes to daily life, we are following Sharia. The way we eat, the way we talk to you, we do this vulgar word to you. No, that's following Sharia. We're being nice to you, that's following Sharia. Constitutionally, Malaysia is a secular country. Oh, I didn't know that. But, but, Islam is a official religion of, his, of Malaysia. That means that Islam play a big role in terms of making uh, the rules and legislations. But then so I was there in World Cup in Qatar. You went there? Well, no, I don't know, but my friends were. Now, how was your friend's experience in Qatar? Well, that was stupid because they're American. So they come to Qatar and they want to say, oh, LBGTQ, rainbow, gay. And I'm like, it's not your country. You imagine if the Muslims come to America and say, why are you wearing shorts? Why are the girls wearing this? You should change the law. I don't, I don't believe in me telling you how to live. If this is your country and these are your rules, I respect your rule. Anyway, well, you see, this, so is, this, this, is, this, is, this is the problem. When they say freedom of expression, freedom of speech, is that you are free as long as you agree with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the, the, the moment you disagree with me, you're no longer free. Correct. That, that kind of freedom will be taken away from you. So when I was in Qatar, there are two English supporters in front of me. They are both, both male. They're talking to each other. They say, this is the best World Cup we've ever been. You know, no alcohol, no be nobody fighting. And you know, BBC conduct a poll uh, in their website and ask, in this millennia, which World Cup is the best? Unanimously, 70% voted for Qatar. Is that because it was well organized or? Not only that it well organized, even for family, for women, they feel so safe, oh. no harassment, etc. Even the Guardian and in the UK, they say, 
this World Cup is the best achievement for UK, not in terms of on the field, but when it comes to their supporters. Because why? Nobody was arrested for fighting. fighting. <laughs> yeah, because the British always fight. They go stupid when they watch soccer. They go stupid. <laughs>